100 soldiers arrived home from the Middle East after a nine-month deployment. They reunited with family at Pope Army Airfield. While overseas, the military says the brigade commanded U.S. field artillery units and provided targeting and coordination of long-range precision fires. They also worked to strengthen military relationships with other nations in that area. I believe our legacy is we demonstrated what a field artillery brigade headquarters is capable of. The reason why we were able to do it was through the application of basic mission command as a leadership philosophy, which is based on trust. Embracing you know, this multi-component team, appreciating their demonstrated competency and commitment to the mission is what generated trust, um, trust down and trust back up. And that allowed us to accomplish a wide variety of missions when we're distributed across five different countries in a big region. Well, I think we showed that readiness is our number one priority. And showing that we can train, that we can maintain, that we have NCOs that we empower and can bring up, just kind of showing how we do things, I think, is uh, what can be a lasting uh, result. In terms of setting conditions for the future, I'd say that expanding the theater security cooperation efforts uh, were uh, opportunities for us to build partner capacity and uh, increase our interoperability for future operations. I think we advanced the ball to reach the point of interoperable, uh, and our artillery forces together uh, will be able to fight and win together uh, if required. Part of our mission downrange was contingency plan readiness, and part of that is you know we rely heavily on our partner nations. Working together allows us to develop ways that we can improve our ways of how we operate together. By doing combined operations, by doing this unit level training, that you develop, hey, okay, well, how, do we, how could we operate together? And then also the, the soldiers really got to understand the, the process and the requirements of their job. They, they, you know, we do all this training and then we actually go to the real world and you apply it and it, it becomes more real. But, you know, the targeting mission, you know, the challenges, the opportunities, the leadership growth, all of that was pay dividends for years to come as, as these young soldiers develop into, into real professionals. So I will tell you that the place where we had the most success was at the junior NCO level. First of all, it made the other countries recognize, look, your NCOs are capable of this as well. You know, so they see our NCOs, you know, they're, they're expecting to get a section chief who's a lieutenant, and they see a section chief who's a sergeant and they come to know that, hey, you know what, maybe, maybe our sergeants have the same capability, maybe they do as well. When you see younger soldiers deploying and they're shoulder to shoulder next to a partner nation guy and he does the same thing you do, maybe there's a language barrier, but the work ethic, the smiles, the, you know, the, the nonverbal communication is there and that teaches them to believe in it, especially when they see it happen and they see execution. So if partnering is such a focus for us as a military, our young leaders, who are going to grow into senior leaders are going to wholeheartedly believe in it. But I just think that'll just prove brighter for our future.